America. Happy Friday. Ohio gozaimasu, Japan. Hello, hello, hello. Giselle, I have this still here. Every time I get on screen, I'm always squeezing this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. How are you, my little squishy? Yes, you're still my little squishy. How are you, Miss Giselle? What's going on? What's going on? Hello, 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 Chris. Where are you from? Where are you from? I feel like I know that name, but I've forgotten. Hey, hey, from Tennessee. Hey, Tennessee, Tennessee. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining me. It's storming outside here, so I'm hoping everything goes well because there's a bit of thunder going on out there. How is everyone doing on this Friday? Tell me something good. California, so the sun is still up over there. Sun should be up over here, but it's, it's, like I said, it's storming, so it's kind of dark out there. Oh, wow. Somebody from Miami, the palm trees, everybody that knows me, they know that I love palm trees because it means that it's warm weather, and I love warm weather. Now, we've got some warm weather up here in Virginia. I think the heat index of the real field was 105 today. What's it like down there in Florida, and what part of California? Because, you know, a lot of times when I initially think of California, I think of, you know, the nice weather. California runs all the way from the north down to the south, so you could be anywhere. Sun and heat, Amila! Patience, thank you all for joining. Oh, yes, Shadow God, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna have to get some music. I got some ideas. I need to get you tell me with some music. Okay, Santa Barbara, okay, okay, okay. 107, yes, yes, yes. Hot, but see, we have that humidity, and that humidity takes it. I'm fine with it. I don't like the cold now. A lot of people they're like, oh, it's so hot. I'm cool with the hot. I'm cool with the hot. All right, you all tell me something good. No one has told me anything good yet. Tell me something good. What have you been up to? What have you been up to? For those of you all who were on last week, we took a vote and you all asked for a nonfiction book, a non-fake book, a book full of facts and information. And so I have a pretty good book lined up for you all, but I want somebody to tell me something good. Tell me something good. What's been going on? What's been going on? See, I'm okay, like I said, with the, the hot weather. So I'm I'm happy. It's pretty outside and we don't have bare trees. So I'm happy with that. Tell me something that you all are happy about. You just complete. I can't wait to hear that album. I know I forgot how many tracks you said that you had on there, but I'm excited about that album. I'm excited about that album. And like I said, I'm going to have to get with you. Tell me with some tracks before I go back to work in September. So I need to get with it because August is literally right around the corner. Anybody else? Well, the funk album is good. So I need to get living. <laughs> You're right about that because there are plenty of people that, you know, they did not wake up. Just got my class ready for kids who arrive on Monday. Oh, so you all are starting school. Yes, we don't start. So the teachers go back the last week in August, but students don't come back until after Labor Day here in Virginia, in this part of Virginia, southeastern Virginia, Virginia Beach, and every place along those areas. All right. I want you all to get your minds ready. So as you're thinking about re listening to and me reading a nonfiction book, that means photos, not pictures. That means facts not just opinions. Oh, I really, really, really love warm and hot weather. That's my opinion. A fact, it's hot outside. So my book is going to have facts in it and the author is going to be giving you information. And it's going to be about something that you may not know of. And so I was looking really hard to find something. And while you all are on here, what do you think my book is going to be about? My shirt, it doesn't give you a clue today. It's just a clue that you are worthy of the best that life has to offer. That's what my shirt means. But I want you all to listen to this and then tell me what you think this book is going to be about. What's that? What do you hear? Brian, hi, Brian. What is this, Brian? What do you hear? All right, you've heard it enough. I need somebody to tell me. That's the clue that I have for what this book is going to be about. I'm waiting for someone to type it. What does that sound? Do I need to play it again? I think I played it. A rooster. I think it's a chicken. Now, some of you all have heard my rooster sound. It's kind of loud. You might need to turn the volume down. When I think of a rooster, I think of... 
That's what I think of. Chicken? Okay, okay, okay. I see still thinking. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. You missed my sound, I think, mom. A raven. I like that. So what I see, rooster, chicken, raven, how are they all the same? How are they similar? If we were going to put them in a group, what would that group be? An elephant. <laughs> that is my favorite animal. You all see elephants all around, even on your screen. It is going to be a bird. Now, I want you to visualize. When you visualize, you can see things in your head, or you might hear things, or you might smell things, or taste things, or feel it. But I want you to visualize. I want you to see a bird that has lots of different colors. Sometimes it's called the colors of a rainbow. Sure, I'll let you hear it again. And then maybe you can tell me what kind of bird. <gasps> What kind of bird sounds like that? Colors of the rainbow, a peacock. They are very colorful. Anything else before I get started and show you all the the photo? I'm sure this bird can make lots of other sounds, but this is the best recording I could find. All right. Are you all ready? You ready? I'm reading this book. It was donated to me by Bellwether Media. Thank you so much for your wonderful nonfiction books. I see a parrot, a crow. Bam! A macaw. It's kind of like a crow. Colors. Animals of the Amazon rainforest. I immediately, when I think of the Amazon, I think of green, 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 green. I think of trees way up high, all the way down to plants on the ground. I think of lots of different animals and lots of different sounds. And I think of these colors here, beautiful flowers in the Amazon. Do you all know anything about the Amazon? If so, you can go ahead and type that, but I'm gonna get started. You all know I like to talk. And uh, I may not ever finish this book if I just keep on doing the talking. All right fascinated bird. If you all know different macaws, as I'm beginning to read this nonfiction book full of facts, tell me what is your favorite one? Macaws. Here we have our table of contents, and it lets us know what we are going to be learning about. The first part is going to be life in the rainforest, and then in the flock, and then Finding food. If we just wanted to know about them finding food, we would go straight to page 12. And then we have a glossary. I always say that's like a little mini dictionary. They're going to be words that we don't know. We may have never heard those words and real. <laughs> yes. And we may have never heard those words and those words would be there to help us to understand this book. And if you want to learn more, they have some websites and index if you wanted to go straight to some things that you already know, like maybe even a reel. You know, I always say we have to use these photos because it helps us to understand. If you can make a connection, oh, this book reminds me of that time that I did, or oh, this book reminds me of real. You want to make those connections. Might have you all to make some predictions here. All right, so. It says in the, we already talked about it because it's on the cover. I forgot that when I was covering it up, but even looking at this picture with all of this green, life in the what? Where is this bird? Life in the rainforest. Now this is a scarlet macaw and it has those bold bright colors. This is not my favorite, but it's a very pretty bird. Sophie, hi Sophie. You missed the bird sounds at the beginning and the and the predicting, but you know what? I'm happy that you are here. Hi Mia. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for joining me. Your friend, yes. Your mom showed me the picture. Thank you, best friend, for joining too. Macaws are tropical birds. They live in trees of the rainforest biome. You could tell that's biome because if I cover up this part, it looks like home from home biome. Do we know what these words mean? Let's go to that little glossary real quick. I'm going to start way in the back of the book. And then biome, a large area with certain plants, animals, and weather. Well, 
the weather is a rainforest. That means it rains a whole lot and it's in a warm place. But let's check out tropical. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q. Oh, way at the bottom. Related to places that are hot and humid. I was like, we in a rainforest here in Virginia and it's raining outside right now. That's my connection. So they live in a place that's hot and humid, has lots of rain. Why is this here? What does the author want us to see here? And can you tell me based upon this, this diagram here, where is the rainforest that they live in? Where is it? Can anyone tell me that? Thank you, mom's red hat lady for joining in. Thank you, thank you. Can you all tell me? Do you all know this continent? I know I've got some people that have done second grade. Do you know this continent? What continent is it, if you know? Mimic words and sounds, they're pretty cool. Yes, and we might learn more about that in this book. Those people who have been in my class said, oh, lifespan up to 50 years. I hadn't seen that part. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'm missing some people on here. South America, there's a song. North America, South America. Yeah, they live in South America. And if you look very close, there's a little bit of North America too. Very good, very good, Amila Patience. Their homes are in Mexico, Central America, and South America. And this is their range. It's just showing you so you can have a visualization. You can visualize exactly where they live. They're different ones. This one definitely looks different than the one, the scarlet macaw. These are captions here. It describes the picture. Blue and yellow macaw. Hmm. What is it eating there? Is this a scarlet macaw? The rainforest is full of bright flowers and fruits. Macaws have adapted to blend in among them. Hmm. Well, I know adapted means that they've changed over time. So wait now. If it says macaws have adapted to blend in among them, does that mean that maybe the macaws were not this brightly colored at one point? I would love for you all to find this answer. Well, let me go here. It says... The birds have bright, colorful feathers. They help macaws hide from predators. How do the feathers help them hide? The answer is over here. How do the feathers help them hide? Will someone please tell me that? I'm going to read it again. I just want you to type it. This is a great way to go back and find the answers. The rainforest is full of bright flowers and fruits. Macaws have adapted to blend in among them. The birds have bright, colorful feathers. They help macaws hide from predators. How do the feathers help them hide? I mean, if it's bright colors, how is this helping them to hide? Can someone tell me that? I'll wait a little bit longer. I know there's a bit of a delay. How does this help them to hide? Yep, the bright colors in the flowers, in the colors. Yes, yes, yes. If they're bright flowers, which orchids are there, and they're so pretty and bromeliads, oh my gosh. And if they have bright fruits there, they need those bright colors as well. Predators. I think you all know what a predator is. If we didn't know that, I'd go back. But I want you all to think about it. What do you think would be a predator for a macaw? What would like to eat that macaw? Yeah, I think that they have changed colors. Cliffy, Lila, hi! Tall trees crowd the rainforest. Long pointed wings help macaws fly fast through the trees. Look at those wings. Did you know that their wings were that wide? I wonder what their wingspan is. That's how, how far they are. Okay, predators. You see eagles and snakes and jaguars and monkeys and toucans and humans. Oh, no, not the humans. Oh, no. Special adaptations. When adaptation is how you change so that you will be able to live in the area that you are in. We have already seen here that it says that they have adapted to blend in. So I know that their colors are one adaptation. What do you think is another adaptation? Before I get, before I move this, I do want you all to predict. What do you predict is another adaptation? Just tell me something. How else do you think they have adapted to live in that rainforest? You see, 
The tall trees crowd the rain forest. Long pointed wings help macaws fly fast through the trees. What could it be? How they adapted to that climate? Let's see what they have on here on this chart. Special adaptation. Let's see. A strong beak. Strong toes. Long pointed wings. They actually gave us that answer over here. It says it helps them to fly through the trees. Colorful feathers. Yet yeah, we already talked about that. The diet helps them to blend in as well. Probably like the, the flamingos. The only reason that flamingos are pink is because of their food. Oh, I got thunder over here. Strong toes help grip branches when they land. So they're flying. Oh, that's what we see here. Can we see? Do you all see the toes? If I bring that in? Got some strong toes there. It's got to be able to grab onto those branches. If not, it'll go falling down. In the flock. Look at this photo very carefully. What do you all think they are doing? What are these two macaws doing? And maybe in this flock over here. In the flock. A flock is a group. I see two here and even more over there. These are different types. There are many different species of macaws. But what are they doing? What are they doing? Waiting a little bit to see. What are they doing? Talking. I don't know who's typing, Amelia, Patience, I don't know. The rainforest is home to many birds. Macaws use loud calls to guard their territories. I looked for some of those calls before I got on here, but hey, greeting one another, talking, talking. Yes, yes, yes. Let's find out what a territory is. It says macaws use large, loud calls to guard their territories. I'm going back to that glossary. What's the territory? We're going to start at the T and go up. Land areas where animals live. Oh, I get it. I'm going to make a connection to Finding Nemo, the first one. When the seagulls saw Nemo and Dory, they said, mine, mine. I think that's what, when the, the macaws make those loud sounds, they're saying, mine, 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 mine. However they make the sounds. You all know I had to do it. They also scream and squawk to talk to their Flocks, you all were right. Everyone that said talking and greeting, you're right. It says it right there. Have you learned anything yet? I learned something when I was reading it, but we haven't gotten to that part yet. Oh, look at those wings. This is my favorite right here. Those of you all who know me, you know my favorite colors are red, yellow, and blue. I've got the blue and the yellow right there. This is my favorite one. What is this macaw doing? How is this macaw using nature? I was reading a book with Xandra. I don't think she's on here. And it's called Nature Reuses and Recycles. How is this bird using nature? Monkeys, snakes, and other predators live low on the trees. Macaws fly high in the canopy. And the canopy is way up high to avoid them. They nest in tree hollows and upper branches. Making a nest right here. Yes, this one is flying. This one is using that tree as a home. It's like, hey, I can make my home here. Scarlet macaw status. This is the scarlet macaw. And then talk about my favorite one. Least concern. We don't have to worry about it. Not like way on the opposite end. The dinosaurs are extinct. And whoever said, I think Shadow God said that they live up to 50 years. Yeah, that's even older than me. Finding food. What type of food do you all think that they eat? Tell me that before. They have to find it. They've got to go looking for it. What types of food do you think that they eat? Now, if you go back and think about something that we read earlier in the book, it might help you to think about what, what type of food? What type of food? I'm going to wait until I see an answer before I go on. Berries. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? I'm slowly taking it all. Macaws eat a lot of fruit. Seeds, berries, nuts. Fruit skin can be hard to eat. This is the part that I learned and I was fascinated. But macaw tongues have special bones. 
We don't have any bones in our tongues. They have bones in their tongues. Did you all know that? Because I didn't. They easily dig into tough fruit. So when they need to get in the fruit, I mean, they don't have fingers. They use their toes, but they don't have the fingers. They don't have knives and forks to cut things. They have bones in their tongues that help them to be able to dig it out. Our tongue would be like, ah, that hurts. And they can dig it out. So cool. It's bitter to them. Fruit skins are pretty impressive. They eat larva. Okay. Did you know that they ate this right here? Anybody know what that is before? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't look. I should have covered it up. Does anybody know what that is? Can you tell? You may have already seen. Hey, bestie. You may have already been able to see. You may have already seen this. I don't know. I don't know. You learned that in second grade, me? Well, you should have told me because I didn't know. Some fruit can be harmful. Eating clay. They eat clay, y'all. Helps macaws eat fruit safely. They're eating clay, I guess, from here. The clay has minerals that help digest food. This keeps macaws healthy. Now, we get minerals in our food. When we eat lots of fruits, we get some minerals. But I guess when we get a tummy ache, if we eat something, we get sick, and we might have to take other medicine. This is their medicine. The clay is their medicine. Looks like, yeah, it was clay. Here's my favorite one again, the hyacinth macaw. So pretty. And that's my opinion. My opinion is this one is the best. It's just so pretty. Using that. Oh, someone said something about nuts and seeds. Here we go. Macaws eat seeds and nuts too. Using that tongue with the bones in it. Their beaks are strong and curved. So they've got that curved beak. And you all can see that here, that little point there. And then we know where everything, its tongue is has bones in it, they easily break through the shells. Here's their diet, palm fruit from the palm trees, papaya, and Brazil nuts. I think this is some very, this is my opinion. I think they're beautiful. And I would love to go to South America and be able to see them flying over me. It's too cold here. Macaws fly far to find food. They spread seeds as they fly. How? Someone please tell me, and I'm going to wait. If they are flying and they've already eaten fruit and fruit had seeds on the inside and they've eaten that fruit and now they're flying, how in the world do they spread their seeds? How? I'm going to wait a little bit. They do look like kites. Your mom's family is from South America. Amazing. Have you all ever visited? Have you visited? Yep. Who said that? Who came up with that? I want to know. They poop it out. When they're flying and they poop, there are seeds in their poop. And when that seed, that poop falls to the ground as a splat. Do I have some hand sanitizer close? I don't. I was going to splat some hand sanitizer. Yeah, I must have moved it. I thought I had some up here. They splat that on there and then... It sits on there, on the ground, and that seed goes down into the soil as the rain comes because it's a rain for us. So it's raining every day. It sprouts up, and we've got more fruit. And it goes on and on and on. Macaw, I read this, right? These colorful birds thrive. That means they do really, really, really well in the rainforest biome. They also help the rainforest grow. And we talked about how. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And that's the end. So before you all go, will you please, 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 please tell me something that you learned. Tell me, tell me, tell me something that you have learned. Something that you learned. I learned about them having the, the bones in their tongue because I had no, 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 no idea about that. Please tell me, what is something that you learned from Macaws? And thank you again to Bell Weather Media. You all should check out their books. Their books are amazing. All these colorful uh, illustrations and wonderful information. I always learn something. Bones in the tongue. Yes, yes. See? We, I had no idea about that. Thank you for joining, Abby. 
Anybody else learn something? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Yeah, that's an awesome lesson. What, what did you learn? What did you learn? The colors to hide. Yes. I never thought about that either because you think about the bold colors and you're thinking, I see you with those bold colors, but then it's like, wait a minute now. If the fruit is a bold color and if the flower is a bold color and there's lots of them in this rainforest, yeah, I, I really can't see it. Bones in the tongue. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you all so much for joining me. Thank you for joining me. I'm not sure what we're doing next week because I've read a, I read two fiction books and I've read this nonfiction book. So I'm not sure what we're doing next week, but I will let you all know. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. All right. You know, we've got to do. I want you to get a happy thought in your, your mind. It could have been something that you have done this summer. It could be like Sophie. I'm pretty sure you happy. You've got your buddy over there, Mia. Just like I'm happy that I've seen my buddy on here all the way from Chicago. And I'm happy that all of you all have joined me. And that makes me happy. And I'm just going to lock that happy thought in. Now I want you to think of something that you did all by yourself that you are proud of. What is it that you did? No one else had to help you and you're like, wow, I, 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 I did that by myself. What is that? Because these things will help you, that happy thought and the thing you did when you're proud of that will help you to feel better at another time. So get that, that proud thought in and I want you to lock it in. Now I want you to have the thing that you are happy about. And I want you to have the thing that you did all by yourself. Maybe in your dance class, you did some type of move. I still think about you, Sophie, getting that leg all the way up. I can't do that. But maybe you did something in your dance class, or maybe you did something in summer camp, or maybe you did something at your house outside, and you all didn't think you could do it. Get that thing you're proud of. Get that thing that you're happy about, and I want you to lock it in, lock it in, lock it in. Inhale. Exhale. Smell, you're beautiful. Thank you all so much for joining me. Your homework. Before you go to bed tonight, I want you to do something to make someone else smile. Because when you do something to make someone else smile, it's going to make you smile too. And I would definitely be back next week. Okay, I'm making sure that I didn't uh, miss anything here. If I did, I will talk to you all. I will comment on it later. Thank you all so much. I'll see you all next time.